How's it going, guys? If you're wondering why you're watching me play Crisis 3 instead of my lovely face, it's because I've been shifting some stuff in my room around, and uh, quite frankly, it's not a pretty sight to look at. So you can watch me get blown up right here, and swim through the water, and get lost, and, and drown. Um, but uh, this is basically a follow-up video, in a way, to the previous one that I did when I did that whole new methodology of, of benchmarking. I kind of took a different route, and surprisingly, I got a lot of positive feedback from you guys. So, long and behold, I'm doing it again, uh, this time with some mid-range GPUs, specifically some NVIDIA GeForce GTX series cards. Uh, I will get around to doing some AMD cards in the near future, so don't freak out, AMD card users. That is coming soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me see. What other things I want to talk about in this video? Um, good feedback. Oh, yes, I am doing a different benchmark loop for this, this test. I'm not using the first level again because, as we all know now, uh, I found out a little bit too late, actually. The rope physics were all screwed up for that first level. It made the frame rate drop ridiculously. So I actually uh, will be showing you guys my new benchmark loop right now. Alright, so with this new benchmark loop that I'm doing, I actually took some inspiration from Linus and Slick's video. Thank you guys for letting me rip off your benchmarking methodology. Uh, so this is actually the same general area that they are in when they begin their loop, It's except it's a little bit before that, so this is going to vary slightly. But uh, thank you again, Linus and Slick. Please don't sue me. So before I even start my testing, I actually want to pull out my crossbow and enable or uh, equip my explosive tip right there, my explosive arrow tip, because I'm going to be using that shortly. And then, as soon as I begin my benchmark, I press the armor, and I go down that hatch right there. And then I look up, and I wait for Psycho, because he's slow. And as soon as he gets to the bottom of this stairway right here, I begin to follow him, just like that. And this is pretty much where Linus and Slick start. Pretty similar, more or less. And I basically follow him through this little tunnel area here, and I try to keep a medium distance away from him at all times so I can see most of his body, especially his feet going through the water like that so I can see the ripples. And uh, there are a few moments in this game, in this uh, little run here though where he'll actually stop and wait for you, just like that, and uh, he'll just sit there until you catch up to him. So be aware of that, you don't want to be standing, waiting for him, waiting for you for too long. But you just finish out this little run here. And uh, like Slick said, by the way, there's a lot of good opportunity for collision and uh, water effects. As, as you saw, Psycho and myself run through the cloth there, as well as the lovely blades of grass all around. So as soon as he drops that, he's going to motion downward with his hand. And when he does that, I'm going to run through the door. So right there, you run through. And as soon as I open this door here, I enable my cloak, and I pull back my lovely arrow and I blow up that turret right there. It's gonna make my life a hell of a lot easier for this benchmark. And... Kill this dude. Yes. Take his gun. Why not? That doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna run up here. There's another guy sneaking around here. Take him out. Another dude right here. So just kill everyone. Don't really, uh, no need to take your time here, just kind of plow through it. And at the very end, you make this final jump, and I stop my benchmark right about there. Alright, so for my testing hardware, I am still borrowing the Core i7-3960X, thankfully, and the Asus Rampage 4 formula as well, along with 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident X RAM. Uh, the video cards I'm using, lovely cards here we have today. Once again, uh, this is a GeForce GTX kind of special uh, video, um, so... Like I said, don't worry if you have an AMD card, I will be getting to those soon. So for now, I have an EBGA GTX 670 for the win, an MSI GTX 660 Ti Power Edition, a Galaxy GTX 660 Overclocked, and an MSI GTX 650 Ti Power Edition as well. And uh, as you'll notice, all of these cards are factory overclocked, and I figured this was kind of uh, representative of, you know, the real real world scenario in most of your cases, because I'm assuming you either have a factory overclocked card already, or you're manually overclocking your card yourselves, uh, or both, right? So let's go on to my first benchmark test with at uh, 1920 by 1080. You can see here the EVGA GTX 670 for the win uh, was able to perform at above 30 frames per second uh, at minimum with the system specs at high and the texture res at very high. 
Um, very impressive SMAA and anisotropic filtering at 4X and 16X respectively. And the game still looked really, really nice on, uh, even though I was playing on a 27 inch uh, monitor, it still looked awesome. And for the record guys, blur was set to medium and flare was on yes for all of these tests at both resolutions. Moving on to the GTX 660 Ti from MSI. This is a Power Edition card. Um, system specs, still able to operate at high and texture res had to bump that down to high coming from the 670. Uh, and SMAA, as you can see there, had to be bumped down to 2X and anisotropic filtering was, uh, you know, still, still keeping up at 4X, which I, I thought was pretty nice. So you're not really seeing terribly much of a performance hit going from the 670 to the 660 Ti, uh, but you are seeing quite a performance hit going from the Ti to the regular 660 version of the card. Um, but, oh, really quickly, I did want to mention, look at the average frame rate for the 660 Ti, the MSI. It's at 66, and the max FPS is higher than all the other cards too, at 94.6. I retested this card over and over and over to make sure that it wasn't a fluke and that I wasn't doing something incorrectly, but that's what I got. And it's, it's you know, keep in mind, you know, this isn't your average apples to apples benchmark test, but relatively speaking, I mean, the, the minimum, with the minimum frame rate being just above 30 for all the cards, I was still getting quite a few more frames per second on average and uh, at max uh, with the 660 Ti. So good job, 660 Ti. And you too, MSI. For the Galaxy GTX 660, like I said, we're taking much more of a performance hit here. Um, so I just wanted to say, yeah, there is quite a huge performance gap. Uh, for the money that you're paying, you actually get a lot more performance jumping from a 660 to a TI. You can see the system specs for the 660 had to be bumped down to medium, as well as the texture resolution and SMAA at 2X with uh, anisotropic filtering at 2X as well. With the 660 Ti, uh, you're starting to near console territory, dare I say, as far as video quality goes. Um, not quite there yet, but getting close with anisotropic filtering completely disabled and 1X anisotropic, or I'm sorry, anti-aliasing completely disabled and 1X anisotropic filtering. Uh, it's just starting to look a little iffy. But if you think that's bad, wait till you go to 2560 by 1600 the resolution that many video cards fear. Uh, so the 660, I'm sorry, the 670 for the win actually still is keeping in the game, I guess. You know, you're starting to see some uh, some serious quality droppage here, uh, especially if you're like zooming in on blades of grass, you can kind of start to see that jaggedy uh, staircase effect. Uh, that's basically because anti-aliasing is disabled now and we're operating off of 1x anisotropic filtering. Um, with the 660 Ti, you can see that you're still getting, if you look at the frame rates, yeah, it's still uh, outperforming the other two cards as far as average frame rate and max frame rate. Definitely max frame rate at 74.6, um, but we are having to step down from our uh, high throne. With system specs at medium now and texture resolution at medium as well, anti-aliasing still disabled and 1x anisotropic filtering. The GTX 660, now, now we're in console territory. Uh, looking at the back of Psycho during that tunnel run, it just looks terrible. I mean, there's like no tessellation whatsoever. His body looks like a piece of cardboard. It's just horrible. I mean, look at the 650 Ti. I mean, it's kind of hilarious. I mean, why did I even test this card at this resolution on this game? Eh, for fun. Average frame rate, 31.4. So 21.5, as you can see there, at minimum uh, frames per second on average. I mean, the game looks like crap at this point, and you can't even play the game. I mean, it looks like a flipbook is being flipped by a sloth. But given the fact that this is a lower end card and we are pushing it against a very graphically intensive game at a very high resolution, these results are completely expected. And with that, I believe that is all the information I wanted to share with you guys today. So thank you all for watching. Uh, subscribe to Awesome Sauce News if you haven't already. And be sure to like this video if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out. If not, please leave a comment in the section below and let me know what I could do to help this channel help you. Thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you all in the next video.